Hey guys, Logan here, and today we are straight back into making our race bike engine from scratch. And so this is as far as we got in the last video. We've done most of the machining on the barrel. Uh, we did come across a couple pieces of porosity which I'm not happy with on the head gasket surface. I'm gonna crank up the TIG and I'm gonna chuck this and the practice one in the kiln for some preheat and we're gonna weld them up. Onto the practice head while the barrel cools down in the kiln. So yeah, I've done the pilot hole, I've drilled it to 8.5, then I drilled it to 8.9, and now I've got an 8.99mm reamer, and hopefully that makes around about a 9mm hole. Heaps of lube. And as you can see, there is our drilled and reamed hole, and it doesn't look too bad. With the head at 160 degrees, let's whack this guy in. Alright, this is going to be a tighter fit than the last one. Hmm. Right, I've come across a little bit of a possible dilemma. So the um, valve guides, the second end ones, which I have in the dummy head, to see where everything sits. Um, I've just put that exhaust one in and yeah, it is miles off where I thought it would end up. So essentially it is about 12 mil recessed from the port wall, uh, which in theory sounds real bad, like it's unsupported, but in an actual reality, it's the same distance from uh, the valve seat to the guide as the R6 head is. It's just the R6 port sort of comes up and there's heaps of volume that's empty and then it goes out, whereas mine sort of goes out like that. And it means there's more meat above uh, where the valve guide would be supported. So yeah, that sort of left a bit of a hole. So I either need to buy some material and try and make my own valve guides or get someone to make a couple of valve guides. I'd be tempted to try and make them myself but they're also quite finicky uh, and obviously a very precision thing you do not want to get wrong or slightly wonky because then that's just going to screw up everything. So yeah, I think I'll uh, have to think on that a bit. Time has come, the good cylinder head is bolted into the milling machine on the sign plate and the first order of business is finding our zero point. So I want to make it the spark plug hole but because we've done welding here and I can feel it on both sides, it is not going to be a very good reference for finding the centre of a circle. We're going to use the water jacket out, that's going to be a nice good reference. Find the centre of that hole and I can move over and machine this hole internally round and then I'll be able to use that as my reference for all the other things on the cylinder head. Just double checking that the spark plug socket fits in the hole and we're looking good. Nope, nope, that doesn't sound good. More clearance needed. And that sounds much better. A quick debur. Just altering the design a bit to account for things moving around and casting. My fancy visual depth gauge. Pretty happy with that, I've got eight holes now all to the right depth on the head and I'm only sort of messed up this one here where I thought I'd, I'd do the dowels as well but it's actually 
it's got a tiny bit of play in it. It might be all right, but I'd prefer it to be tighter. So I'm gonna actually have to make one of these. It's a smidge oversized for this one hole. So now all these holes need M6 threads in them. I've got the life center from the lathe in the mill, and I can use that as a guide, and I'll still be hand feeding them with the tap wrench, but I can use that to keep them super straight up and down, which is cool. A few hours later. Giving these edges a quick lick with the sandpaper. A quick deburr. Pretty happy with how that went. I have the all the holes for the cam caps all drilled and tapped. Obviously have a little bit more work to do on the few dowels, um, but other than that, the ultra size, I just surfaced the top, took that to final dimension as well. And so now I'm going to grab the barrel, which I've just taken out of the kiln. It's, I've done a T5 heat treat to get those welds a bit more solid. And yes, yeah, so I'm gonna chuck it in the mill and start machining. So I was just cleaning up the barrel in the mill and I decided it would actually be a much more intelligent idea to do it in the lathe. So I've just chucked the four jaw chuck in and I had the barrel five seconds ago and I don't know where I put it. And I don't know how often this happens. You just put it down without thinking and then no clue where you put it. So I gotta go find it. It was hiding behind the three jaw chuck. <laughs> Mounting the barrel in the chuck and throwing it up. A quick face and then a quick bore. And there we are, back from machining. I've cleaned up the top surface and the bore. Everything turned out pretty good after the welding and machining. And with the head, we made pretty good progress on the top surface. That is all pretty much done. I just need to run the reamer through those uh, dowel holes and then they're good to go. Uh, I did get distracted when I was on the computer and I actually made an intake manifold uh, well, a dummy intake manifold. So for the initial testing of this engine, once everything's together, it's going to have a carburetor on it. So I have this FCR 33mm, which, yeah, should fit on there quite nicely. I've got a, a rubber manifold coming, and I may have this um, mach CNC machined or 3D printed or something along those lines. And yeah, so everything should sit about there now. It does... To me make the intake track look way too long i would have thought i would want the end of the trumpet about here so i can't do that because of how i designed everything it made life difficult for myself um, and so yeah the final version of this engine when everything's up and running and working as it should is going to be fuel injected and while i was designing this i actually whipped up a quick design for a guillotine or slide throttle body so that would mount straight onto here with a couple countersunks and essentially the slide moving up and down would make it completely unobstructed at wide open throttle which is really good because if you look at normal carburetors you look through the throat of this at wide open throttle you can see there's obviously the needle in the middle like most carbs but along the sides You've got all these different blimmin' grooves and things, which I think are probably not super critical, but I do think they affect power a bit. So I was thinking if it's a straight shot through, nice and smooth, no ridges, valleys, hollows at wide open throttle, because that's where we want the power. Um, like 20% throttle, don't really care. 100% uh, throttle, that's where it's important. And there we go, a piece of steel clamped in the vise. Now somewhere inside here is a crankshaft. Now, that's mild steel, it will be a test crankshaft. I've never made a crankshaft before. Um, and so most of it will be done on the lathe. Uh, but for a start, I need to clean up all the faces on this. There needs to be two holes either end so I can spin it between centers on the lathe. Now, my engineering friends sort of laughed a little bit when I said I was gonna try and make a crankshaft on there and said my lathe is made of cheese which is their way of saying it's not big enough or not rigid enough to essentially take good cuts out of a piece of steel without vibration chatter, breaking tools, uh, pain and suffering, all those things that go with uh, machining on a lathe. So I'm gonna give it a go. And with that, here goes nothing. Yes, yeah, so I've got it mounted vertically and we'll just have to wait and see if it's rigid enough. Uh, the machine will soon tell me if this is a good or a bad idea. Surprisingly rigid. There we go. 
engage that. Right, for a bit of a laugh, I've chucked that piece of steel in the, the lathe just to demonstrate uh, how this is going to work uh, for you and myself, so I can sort of get my head around it. So essentially, I've got it set on that set of holes here, so we'll be able to machine all of this section here when it's set in those holes, and then if I moved it to the other hole, so there's a hole here and another hole there, then you'd be able to machine the big end. So this here, I'm planning on getting rid of most of it uh, with some sort of bandsaw, laser cutter, water jet. So if anyone has one a local to Christchurch, New Zealand, uh, who wants to give me a hand, that'd be much appreciated. But I can't actually do any cutting on this at the moment because I don't have what's called a drive dog. So I need some way of properly transferring the spindle power to the piece of steel because at the moment I've only got a little bit of friction from the dead center and that is not enough to stop the spinning. So for example, I can turn it on, but as soon as you engage the tool with the workpiece it would probably stop the workpiece spinning because yeah there's insufficient uh, drive or friction to make everything work as it should on a lathe. Uh, so I was going to show you on the computer what this crankshaft should look like when it's done. So it is looking pretty good, I've even got it animated, as you can see the these will be bolted on with those bolts there, drive side and they're also a bit of an aerodynamic design which um, it's pretty cool, wider at the front and then they get thinner at the back. So yeah, that should spin uh, pretty good at high RPM is the goal. And that's about it for today's video. I've made some good progress on the barrel and the head and a little bit on the crankshaft. There's still probably a lot more to do on that. If you know anyone locally who can, yeah, like I said, cut out a bunch of that steel, make my life easier, that'd be much appreciated. And yeah, on that note, this has been Logan from the Motorcycle Forge. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time.